Today we are making a personal CRM as part of the career quest series. We've made a job tracker, a resume, and then a cover letter. And today we're making the personal CRM. Now, obviously a personal CRM doesn't need to be for job tracking or anything like that. But if you want to learn the other stuff, then check out my previous videos. So we are going to do this in under five minutes because people online are making this way too complicated. You don't need a million different properties. We're going to write forward slash data. And then here we're going to click on table view and we are going to do a new table here. Now here we'll write personal CRM and we're only going to work with one database. People do have multiple databases. Again, they're making it too complicated. I love connecting databases, but we don't need that for a personal CRM. Let's keep it simple. So first column here, we have name. Now, if you created a new database, you should have this tags property, but if you don't see it, I will just delete it and show you how to add it. We'll click on the plus button here and then we will click on select and we'll call this relationship. So here we can fill out the different types of relationships. So family, friends, a specific company you worked at. So company one, company two, maybe a networking event, something like that. So you can add all of these different properties here. Then after that, we have the obvious ones. We are just going to add a email and we'll click on plus again and we will add a phone number. Now we're going to add a property that I don't see most people add. We're going to click on plus and we could either do this as a text or we could do this as a select or a multi-select. There's actually a few different ways we could do it. I think I will do multi-select for this one. And what we are going to write here is expertise. Personally, I like filling out the exact expertise that this person has. So let's just add some names. We have John, we have Jane, and we have Jim. And here we can fill out the specific expertise that these people have. This I find super important for mentorship. I'm a big advocate for mentorship. I think it is so useful. If you don't have a mentor, I really recommend it. And to find a mentor, you'll need to know what area do I need help in so I know who to actually get as my mentor. So that is why it's so important to fill out the expertise. So let's say John is an expert in marketing, Jane is an expert in design and marketing, and then let's say Jim is an expert in photography. So if I have this large personal CRM, filled with all the people that I know, all the people that I've networked with, all the people I've connected with, and I have them all in here with their expertise. When I need help for a certain thing, so let's say marketing, what I can do is go up to filter and then filter by expertise. And here I can select marketing. So now every single person that's an expert in marketing will come up here. This is a really useful way to solve your problems. That is what mentors are there to do. And most people don't have this column, but as you can see, it will be so useful in the future when you actually need help with something. So I'll just delete this filter like that. Now let's say hypothetically that John agrees to do a mentorship. Well, what you could do in here is open this up and here you can write the different questions that you have for John. And this is actually what I do. So if I'm meeting with a person who's an expert in marketing, for example, I will write down all the different questions that I have for them. So question one, question two, because if they've agreed to a mentorship session, I don't want to waste their time. I want to come prepared. So having my questions in Notion, I can open that up and write these down. I'm actually taking notes with what they're saying and it's all being tracked here in the CRM so I know what they said and how it's going to help me. Now we have one last property to add and then we are going to add a group as well. So we are going to click on plus here and we are going to click on date. Now this is going to be the last contacted or the last time you saw them. Now this is really important to know. You want to know when was the last time I actually saw this person and we can fill that out here. So we can click and add some dates like that. That way I can see here when it's time for me to reach out to that person again. But having to manually go through all of these different dates will be way too much effort. So that's why we are going to add a sort to this. So if you click on sort here, and then we can sort by last contacted. Here we can say, do we want it ascending or descending? So we can see either most recent or the date furthest back in time. So if you do ascending, that makes most amount of sense to me. You want to know which person haven't I seen in the longest amount of time. So we have a very simple personal CRM here. It doesn't need to be more complicated than this. People had way too many things in here like birthday and age and random stuff. It's just making it confusing. And then you're not actually going to use it on an ongoing basis. But one thing we are going to do is add a group to this. And that's the last stage here. So we're going to click on these three dots and then we're going to click on group. And the reason we're grouping is we don't want to see family in the same list as people from company two. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're going to group by relationship. Now what this personal CRM is doing is splitting this up into company one, company two, networking, and the hidden ones, they're only hidden because they have nothing in it. 
the family, friends, and the people that haven't been labeled yet with a specific relationship. This is really useful to note. It doesn't make a lot of sense to have friends in the same list as people from your first job. Most likely, I'm presuming you're seeing your family and friends a lot more than you're seeing the people at that internship you did. Now, bear in mind, we still have the sorting in place here. So if I add someone to company two, let's say Jan, and she is an expert in marketing as well, if I add a last contacted and let's go back here and say the 1st of Feb, as you can see, it jumps up in here. So it's only jumping up in this specific group here. And that's the useful thing about sorting in groups. Jan here will not jump up above John in company one. It's staying in these separate groups. So you can see from company two, who is the person that has been the longest time since I saw them. If you like the way I think about Notion, you are going to love my Notion template headquarters. It's my all-in-one Notion system handling your tasks, projects, life buckets, resources, notes, bottlenecks, dynamic journaling, time tracking, and so much more. Absolutely everything you could need in the one hub. As of recording this, it has over 900 users with a five-star rating. Click on this video here to have a proper look and thank you so much for watching.